What the hell does that have to do with riding a motorcycle? Well, good morning everybody. This is Cruise Man. Just about to head home after having my Sunday breakfast here at Awake in Carrollton. And we are definitely getting some warm weather this week. But uh, as you can maybe see in the clouds, uh, we're supposed to get some rain later on today. It's actually pretty pleasant right now. It's just real humid, but uh, it's not too hot. And I, you know, I don't even know if we've hit 100 degrees yet here in, in uh, Dallas. I'm not sure. I know some of you have sent me uh, messages saying that it's like 110 degrees in California or in Utah and other parts of the country. And we have escaped the super hot weather so far, but I know it's coming. We'll get ours. It's just a matter of when. Well, I want to welcome you to uh, Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. And I would uh, invite you, if you have a passion for motorcycles, I would invite you to click that little subscribe button down below. And I should remind you, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe to this channel. Some people think that if you hit the subscribe button, it's going to cost you some money. It doesn't. It's a free. It's free. So, all these videos on YouTube are free. And uh, we currently have about 450 different videos. So, please click that subscribe button. Don't forget to click that little bell icon and you can let YouTube know that you want to be notified when we come out with new videos. So thanks for joining me today. I got an email this morning from a gentleman who is considering moving away from his uh, Indian motorcycle to a Honda Goldwing. And he asked me a very interesting question. He's interested in the airbag model. And he pointed out that I really don't talk much if at all about the airbag model the 2021 Goldwing that I test rode in my video was an airbag model but I really didn't talk much about the airbag model and uh, he's doing research and he se can't seem to really find much information about the airbag model as far as statistics or you know just general information the only thing I know personally is that the airbag model can be a little bit more difficult to work on uh, anytime you do any sort of uh, maintenance where it's going to require removing body parts or disconnecting electronics or you know connectors you always want to disconnect the battery first take the negative cable off of the battery because you don't want any electrical uh, possibility of causing that air pack that airbag to deploy while you're working on something and as long as you uh, disconnect the battery cable uh, that shouldn't be possible uh, other than that I don't know much about the airbag model I know that my maintenance video series other than replacing the air cleaner and possibly the video on removing the center pocket wouldn't apply to an airbag model but I have not done a video on how to replace the air cleaner on an airbag model. So I, there just aren't that many airbag models. That, you just don't see that many of them. So they're not that prolific. Even though apparently they do sell. They must sell well enough to where Honda keeps making them. So. I mentioned to him, I replied to his email, and I said I would mention this in a motor vlog, which I am now, and ask you guys out there to put comments down below if you have any experience with the airbag model Goldwing. Have, has, 
has the airbag saved you from injury in an accident or do you know of anybody where an airbag has deployed and actually uh, provided that uh, that safety barrier because I just haven't heard any statistics Honda doesn't really talk about it and I just really have not heard much about how effective those airbags are so if any of you have any information on that I would be really interested and I know this gentleman would be interested I'm sure you'll watch this video and he will uh, you know read your comments I'd appreciate the information I also want to make sure you know that I will not be at Wingding this year. I know some of you were looking forward to getting together and meeting and uh, I have some other commitments that I have to take care of so I just unfortunately won't be able to make it. Now somebody put a comment in on my last video where I talked about, I think I just casually mentioned that I don't even know why I have to pay to go to Goldwing or, or, or to Wingding or why uh, and somebody asked me the question say why do you say you don't know why you have to pay to go to Wingding about a year and a half ago I actually had lunch with a couple of other YouTube YouTubers who are Goldwing oriented YouTube channels. Chris Caliente was one of them and uh, Brother Cowboy and we were talking about the Wingding thing. This is right before the Wingding two years ago. So I guess it was more than two years ago we met. And I mentioned to them at the time and actually one of the other gentlemen that was riding with us brought it up. He said I don't know why Wingding doesn't invite you guys to be there and put on a seminar or a, a panel or a discussion panel or something and that got me thinking if I were putting together a, an event like Wingding I would make sure all the YouTube influencers were at my function and promoting my function to their followers and so I don't I don't think I'm saying this out of arrogance but between myself and Memphis Mike and Chris Caliente and um, Brother Cowboy and several others out there that do YouTube content we probably have a combined audience of I don't know 50 or 60 thousand followers and you would think I've oh, got a little emergency here you would think that uh, the people that put on Wingding would be a little more attuned to the market right now and who has influence but they don't I think it's an old company an old group of people that they're not up on the new stuff they just aren't probably up on the technology they I mean when was the last time you saw a video of Wingding they don't do video so they're they're kind of stuck in the past and if I were 10 or 15 years younger I would probably put on my own events like Wingding I know I could do a better job than they do. I have some uh, history and experience with putting on large events. And um, I've always been pretty disappointed in how they put together their functions and their trade show. Their pricing for vendors at the trade show is oppressive. It's prohibitive. And that's why you see those trade shows getting smaller and smaller and smaller every year at Wingding. And you're also seeing the audience, the people coming to Wingding. You know, the first Wingding I went to probably six or seven years ago, gosh, there are, I don't know, seven or eight thousand, nine thousand people there. It's a pretty big event. 
And I think the last one we went to two years ago, there might have been 3,000 people at the most. And I don't know how many people are going to go to Springfield, Missouri, but I would suspect, I don't know this for a fact, I just would suspect it's going to not be a huge crowd. Now, I'd be interested in those of you who are going to make sure to report back, let me know uh, how many people were there. I don't know how many facilities there even are in Springfield, Missouri that could handle large crowds. I know one year they had it here in Dallas-Fort Worth. Kind of an odd location to have a wingding because there's really nowhere interesting to ride in this area. And that's one of the best things about Knoxville as a, or even Nashville, but Knoxville more than Nashville. There's some great riding in the Knoxville area. So the best motorcycle related event that I've ever been to was Rocky's Gold, which was in Colorado. And I think I went two years in a row and then they stopped doing it because uh, and the gentleman who who was the kind of the force behind it just kind of decided to retire and get away from it but that was a very very well done function for people who love to ride motorcycles and so wing ding is more about people getting together and parties and and wearing vests with pins on them and I'm just not into that you know maybe you guys are and that's fine that's just not my thing and so I'd be interested to know your thoughts on Wing Ding. I've always been a little disappointed in, you know, what it has to offer. Um, it seems more oriented to a really older crowd. And uh, honestly, I'd say 60% of the people or more have trikes. Most of them are triked out gold wings. So I don't know, maybe I'm just, I'm just talking off the top of my head here. So let me know your thoughts. If you've been to Wingding before, what did you like about it? What do you not like about it? Uh, are you planning to go this year? And, you know, or do you share some of my thoughts? Because to me, it just kind of leaves me. I like the fact that I get to meet some of you guys and shake hands. And that's, that's nice. I enjoy that. That's all I get out of it. And I walk through the trade show. Half of the vendors have nothing to do with motorcycles now. They're selling beds or sheets or or eyeglass cleaner or, or you know, a cookware. What the hell does that have to do with riding a motorcycle? I could care less about that kind of junk. I could get that at a home show in Dallas for $5. I also don't understand why you have to go to Wingding, why you have to pay to go to Wingding if all you want to do is go to the trade show. You should just be able to go to the trade show for free. The vendors are paying a fortune for that booth space. And so, I don't know. I just have a different philosophy on this stuff. Put your comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to watch my video coming up this week on the new Bon Armor. Very exciting new video, not the one I just re-released. This is a new video, so make sure you tune in to watch that. Hit the subscribe button, click the bell, and YouTube will let you know when it comes out. And I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlog.